here we go. Okay. Um, so if you've been on the dialer guys and you guys are booking these listing opportunities or what we're, we're calling them, I guess, opportunities, right? Hand raisers, people who have expressed interest in knowing what their home could sell for, what an offer would look like. Um, that's the very per first step, right? You call, hey, would you guys entertain an offer on your home? We have a lot of buyers we're working with. And so what we can do is we can set up a time to talk and kind of go over what the numbers would look like and what a potential offer would look like on your home. So we've been setting up what are called, what we're calling agent callbacks. That's what I'm calling them right now, unless someone comes up with a cooler name. Um, but we're just going to call them seller agent callbacks, right? Which is step two in the process. So what we're going to be going over today, guys, is strictly that step two, how to go over the step two, what to say on the call. There's some framework. There's a little guide. And so I'm going to explain it um, in some detail, and then we're going to role play it together, basically, is what we're going to do today. Um, and it's it's not that hard, guys, um, to do this if you've done your research and you've done a good job on the first call of taking the right information down. And so that's the crucial piece of this, right, is when you make that first call, you need to make sure that you are taking down all the details. And I have seen some of the uh, forms that you guys are filling out, there are some where some of the fields are missing or you guys are just putting NA or I, TBD or one of them said client didn't say, client didn't mention. So what I'm thinking was what an agent didn't ask, right? Like, <laughs> you know, so the, the fields are there for a reason, guys, right? If there's a reason that we're listing those, you know, six or seven questions that you got to ask, it's there for a reason. And so for it to be the, to be a complete, you know, lead or hand raiser, you got to take, you got to ask all the questions, right? Because all those questions are going to come into play when you start go, trying to book that listing appointment or trying to close them for a listing or doing this agent callback. So that's step number one needs to be done correctly for this to work well, is the point I'm trying to make. And so if you're getting that part down and you, now you're at step two, what we've been doing is we've been handing off step two to some of our senior agents for now. But eventually we're going to get so many of these where we need to train you guys how to do step two, right? So that's what we're going to do today. Doesn't mean you're going to get it on your first try. Doesn't mean it's not going to take some practice, but it's really not rocket science, guys. It's it's pretty basic. And the way I've outlined it, if you just literally just look at the bullet point and just follow the guide, you will have done like 90% of the work there, right? Um, the only time where there'll be a little bit of variation is if the client starts throwing some objections at you. And that's where you just need to do a little bit of objection handling. Um, so let's look at this. Let's walk through it. I'm going to explain kind of each point and why I put it there and why I'm asking it in that fashion. And so you guys kind of get the gist and the understanding. And then we're just going to do a live a role play. Maybe I'll role play it with Jason or Jason role play with me. So you guys see how I would ask it. And then we will break up into groups and you guys will role play it on each other. Fair? Cool. Um, and feel free to stop me guys. If you have any questions as I'm going through this, like why I'm asking that or why I'm not asking this, like it's important that you guys interact so that you guys understand why I developed it this way. Um, so step number one, guys, is the agent callback. So first, first thing off the bat, this is not a listing appointment. This is not to replace the formal listing appointment. This is literally a callback to try to book a listing appointment, right? You got the hand raiser, the interested party. Now you're calling them back to really dig in a little deeper to see if the motivation's there, if they're realistic on price. And then your goal is, there's only two outcomes from this, right? Number one is I've identified a motivated seller now. They went from a hand raiser to a motivated seller. And so my goal is book a listing appointment. That's the ultimate goal, set the appointment. And so you're selling the appointment, right? That's the important part is you're not selling them to work with you. You're not selling them to sell their home. You're selling the benefits of meeting with you to go over the process and learn how, how to achieve their goals, right? So you wanna sell the appointment. Um, what I do hear a lot of times people say, and this is, this is like a common mistake, is, hey, if I was able to do this, would you work with me, right? Or if I was able to uh, you know, sell your home for top dollar, would you work with me, right? That's like basically saying like, to a girl like, hey, if I was cute, would you marry me, right? Like, I don't know, right? Like, I'd maybe go on a date with you, but I'd have to figure out a little bit more to see if I want to marry you or if I want to get into a relationship with you, right? Unless you're fast, I don't know, right? But 
you guys get what I'm trying to say, right? So sometimes we're saying that on the phone where if I brought you a buyer, would you guys, you know, want to sell your home today? Right. It's like selling a home is a big process, right? So you got to like pump the brakes a little bit and you need to sell the appointment. Hey, does it make sense for us to meet and go over the process and get you the right information? So then you could think if it makes sense for you to sell or not, right? And that's the position you have to take when you're making these calls is you are not trying to sign a listing or close somebody over the phone. If you do that, what's going to happen is the client is going to pump their brakes. They're going to put up a wall. They're going to say, whoa, you're being creepy, right? We just met. Why, how you, why are you asking me to marry you, right? And they're not going to want to talk to you anymore, right? So don't be a creep, right? Don't be a real estate creep. What we're going to call it a real estate creep. Um, so next time I hear somebody doing that, I'm going to say, you're being a creep, bro, right? <laughs> And then it'll take you back to this moment and you'll remember what I'm talking about, right? Is that fair? Is this a fun way for us to remember that, right? Hey, you're being a creep, Mark. Sell, sell, the, sell the date, not the marriage, right? Sell the date. Um, okay. Uh, so the agent callback should take 15 minutes max. If you're going more than 15 minutes, you're talking too much, guys. Now you're trying to do a listing appointment. You will not close someone over the phone or over Zoom, especially when they're trying to sell their house. It's really hard to do that, right? Maybe with buyer, even with buyers, it's hard to do that, right? We do our consultations, but then you don't really close them to work with you until they go out and experience what it's like to work, right? So um, this is like a pre-step to the appointment. Did I drive that point home enough? All right, you guys follow me? Um, okay, it should be conducted over the phone or via Zoom, whichever is easier. Right. Remember, we want as li as little barriers as possible, in my opinion, because if this is just a short call to try to book a listing appointment, if I'm like, hey, can you meet on Zoom? Can you do all this? Can you jump through all these hoops to get on a call with me? And I'm making it difficult for the call for the, the agent callback to happen. I'm shooting my own self in the foot. Right. So what I would do is like, hey, hey, we can jump on a phone call or a Zoom, whichever is easier for you, Mr. Client, because there are some clients that that like being on Zoom, that are techies or whatever it might be, and they're used to Zoom. So maybe that's, they do Zoom, right? Um, but I would try to do phone call if possible, quick phone call, and then go from there. Um, prior to the call, your job is to research the property, look at the comps, spend 10, 15 minutes preparing for this point, for this call, right? Look at the comps, click on the pictures, see what has sold, see if that house was nice or not. Print them out, jot some notes down, right? Because you want to have this bit of ammo that you can go on the call with. If you didn't research the property, guys, and you're talking to this client and you start trying to spit facts and they know more about the property than you do, what just happened? You just lost, you lost the client potential. You lost credibility that you're the expert, right? So by just taking five, 10 minutes to really look at the comps, and I'm, I look through all the photos. I, I scroll through the photos. And what I do when I print comps, guys, is I'll do my CMA, but then I go through each property and I write a note. Comp number one, remodeled, small backyard, shitty photos, staged, not staged, right? And so I want that data so that when I go meet with the seller, when I talk to the seller, I can start saying, hey, yeah, that property down the street, it wasn't as nice as, as what you're describing yours is. The, it wasn't marketed properly. It probably would have sold for way more if they would have just cleaned it up and staged it, right? Because then when I'm making recommendations of why you need to stage, I want to show those examples, right? So this is why you researching the comps and actually coming as the expert is very, very important. Um, and then from there, you want to formulate a sales price range for that property. We don't want to give exact numbers. We want to give a ballpark. Why do we want to give a ballpark? You want to give them options. We don't know what they have in mind. We don't know what they think their property is worth. We don't know the condition. We don't know enough about the property yet to say like, it's going to be a million bucks. And we also don't want to be responsible for the price. Cause are we responsible for the price at the end of the day? No. So this is one thing that I've learned from training and listing appointments is never make yourself responsible for the price. If you do that, that's a losing battle. If you promise a client, yeah, I'm going to get you this you already set yourself up for a trap because if you don't get that, then who looks bad? You do. 
where if you say, hey, guys, this is what the data is telling us. This is what the price ranges are going for in your neighborhood. This is what can likely happen if all these conditions are met. You can try to hit the high end of the neighborhood, maybe even more because homes, some homes are selling for more than the last comp, you know, but I never want to say like, it's going to go for exactly this, right? I want to focus on what's the range in the neighborhood. And then I want to focus on what's the strategy for how we put the home on the market. What's the, how do we position the price on the market? Not what's it going to end up selling for? What's it going to end up selling for? There's a whole lot of things that have to come into play that are out of my control. Right. If the rates just went up overnight by 1% and I told them it's going to sell for this price, what happens to the prices? Probably going to change, right? Because people start pumping their brakes, less buyers. Right. So formulate the sales price range, establish the low, the median, which is the middle and the high end of the neighborhood. And also understand the difference in homes that are going like as is, not really fixed up or marketed versus homes that are fully marketed, fully prepped and done the right way, right? And so you need to already know so that when you're spitting those facts, you can say, hey, this home sold for this because of this, right? This home sold for this high price, most likely because of this, right? And this is how those were different. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. Questions about just how we go into this. So when you're talking about the comps, I mean, are you, I know you research them, but how do you, how are you illustrating the comps to the, to the client if you're talking to them over the phone? I'm just going to tell them, like, I'm going to spit like, hey, I looked in your neighborhood. I've done some research. There were three or four comps. And I'll get to that in a second. Okay. But I'm basically just going to spit the facts, right? Like, I would have my CMA in front of me. I would have my notes. And I would just start telling them, hey, there's this comp. Did you guys see that home? It was right around the corner from me. Oh, yeah, I saw that one. Okay, well, that one went for this. And here's why it went for this, right? And here's what I observed about that property, right? So I'm just going to tell them. Right. And just depending on the client and how knowledgeable they are, I can go a little bit more or a little bit less. So you also have to read the room. If the client, like you could tell they don't really understand and they're like super like basic or they don't understand this stuff at a high level. Don't start just throwing all these crazy numbers. The sales to list price ratio is this and days on the market as compared to the trends and all this stuff. Like dude, you lost the client. Right. So read the room. Now, if the client is a little bit smarter, right? Or maybe they're asking certain questions and you're like, okay, this guy knows what they're talking about. This guy's done his research. He's on Redfin searching. And that one, you got to come a little bit more with your A game, right? So you also got to learn how to read the room, right? Which is very important. Um, any other question before I move on? Cool. Okay, so here's the framework, right? If all you did was just print this out and have it in front of you and you've already done your research and you already took your notes and you just go bullet point by bullet point and just say it in your own words, you're 90% there, right? I say 90% because, you know, we can't control what the other person does on the other side. If they're weird, if they're crazy, if they're just unrealistic, if they tell you off, whatever, if they say something wild, I can't control that. But 90% is good, right? That's a good shot. Um, especially if you've already had a great first conversation and now this is the second, second call. Um, so first, number one, introduce yourself and why are, why you're calling. So I would say, Hey, Antonio, it's Enrique. Um, you spoke to, so it depends, right? Did they speak to someone else and you're the one calling back or did they speak to you? Right. And you're calling back. Right. So in this circumstance, they spoke to me and I'm calling them back. Hey, it's Mark again, or Hey, it's, it's Enrique again. We spoke yesterday about your property. Uh, I promised I'd call you back today to go over the numbers. Is now still a great time, right? Good. Okay, this is only going to take about 15 minutes. So I would already just set the stage. I just want to go over some information and then we could determine what the next steps would be, right? So what I'm calling to go over today, I'm telling them why they're calling. I've done some research on your property and I'm calling to go over what an offer would look like on your home, right? If you have any questions during this call, feel free to ask. I want to make sure you get as much info as possible. Okay, so I'm setting the stage, right, of, Hey, we spoke. Hey, I'm calling you back when I said I wasn't a call back. Hey, I've done some work. I have some great information. This is what we're going to go over. And I'm also setting the stage that it's only going to take 15 minutes, right? And then we can determine next steps from there. So I'm already setting up that there could be a next step if it makes sense, right? Okay. So I want to briefly now recap and confirm the information that I collected the day before. So I should have that information somewhere. Hey, I just want to recap. And what I would do is I'd pull up that sheet wherever I wrote my notes down or the tracker that we have. 
and I say, hey, it's just quickly, I want to just recap. We spoke yesterday. Let me just, I just want to reconfirm this is the right information. It looks like you want to move because you guys are trying to downsize, right? Kids have moved out. You want to downsize. Uh, home's just getting too big for you guys. And you guys have already identified a neighborhood you want to move into. That's still the case, correct? Yeah, that's the case, right? Um, and if I wanted to dig a little deeper and ask more questions, and I can do that at that point. Hey, tell me, what sort of neighborhood are you looking at? Like use that opportunity to build a little bit of rapport and get to really understand the client's needs at that time. Because I already got them talking to me. I already got them listening. I already have them reconfirming the information. You know, ask the questions that you need to, because that's going to show them that you're really interested in, in what's important to them. So um, I'll go through the, through the series of questions. Hey, it looks like you told me you're, the condition of your home is, is pretty remodeled, right? I, I have my notes here that you guys remodeled the kitchen. You know, on a scale of one to 10, what do you think your home would rate? One, a 10 being brand new, one being it's about to fall over, right? Where would, what would you say? And I would even throw in jokes, guys, right? Like the way I made you laugh right now, that's how I am on the call. Why am I like that? Exactly, everything you guys just said, because I'm a real person, I wanna be likable, I wanna be remembered, I wanna let them know like, hey, I'm not just a robot, I'm trying to just close you, like I'm a real person, right? And if I can get them to laugh, what am I already doing? I'm creating a relationship, right? So don't just be a robot on the phone either, right? Like actually genuinely show your personality. Don't go over the top either, and like be a comedian, you know? But be naturally who you are and naturally be a, a real person, right? Because you don't want you don't want that to backfire on you either, huh? Yeah, show you care, right? Um, and so I'm gonna ask any addition additional questions to clarify the seller's motivation. Hey, just want to understand like it's really important to you to you know get the home sold in a timely manner. You said you know maybe getting top dollar on your home was important, and you want to make sure you move to this new neighborhood, you know before you know in the next six months, right? I'm just kind of recapping what they told me. And then they'll correct me. Oh, no, you got it wrong, right? Like, I actually want to move in three months. Oh, great. Let me make a note of that, right? And so I want to I want to just go in and like bring them back to our conversation yesterday because a lot could have happened from yesterday to today, right? The dog could have died. They could have had a bad day at work. They could be stressed out. Maybe you caught them at a good time. Now you're catching them at a bad time. I want to get them back into thinking like talking about the home. I think it's Mm -hmm. it also kind of lowers your guard because we're talking about something you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. Those are the two things that I like when you recap, any type of marketing when you're calling them back. Yep. And then when when I've showed them that I've prepared, right? And if they're talking to anybody else, they're like, man, you took the time to prepare. Like this person's on it. They are forming an opinion of me on the phone, right? Immediately. So how I conduct myself, how likable I am, how my tone is, if I sound not too confident and I'm, you know, or I'm really quiet and they're louder or whatever it might be, they're forming that opinion of me, right? So remember, you got to, this is your time to turn it on, right? Turn it on and really showcase who you are and the value that you bring, right? And so uh, I'm going to use this time, like I said, to build rapport and I'm going to really understand the client's needs at this point, Right. And I would even ask the question, hey, is there anything else that I'm missing here that's important to you? That's like a question that I can ask, right? Um, I just want to show them like, I'm here to help you out, right? I'm here to, to serve you. Uh, and then so next step, guys, feel free to stop me. And, and if you have any questions about this process, just stop me if you want me to clarify any of these points. Kind of winging it because now we actually have a really good structure. Now you're understanding the next step and why it's important to have still on your back when you're talking to potential sellers. Yep. Um, and the only way to really crush it on this call is to be prepared. If you're not prepared and you're like, you booked the call and your call's in five minutes and you haven't even looked at the notes, you haven't even like sat there and really figured out what's my angle and studied it, and you're just jumping on that call and you're taking it in the car while you're eating freaking a sandwich. Good luck, guys, right? That's not the way to do it. You're talking about a potential million dollar, $2 million listing with a $25,000 to $50,000 gross commission. Take the freaking time to get prepared, right? This is important, right? 
So I just want to drive that home. Um, the next part, guys, establish credibility briefly by summarizing yourself, your company, and our track record, right? So, hey, quickly, Miss Antonio, I just want to quickly tell you about me. You know, I know we didn't get too much into it yesterday. We are a legitimate company. Hey, we're based here in San Jose. Our team's actually, you know, one of the top teams here in the South Bay area. Uh, Zillow actually handpicked our team to be one of their preferred partners. And they only picked five teams in our area out of the hundreds and hundreds of teams out there. Um, we've been doing business for over 20 years. We really focus on giving clients a great experience. We have over 600 five-star reviews online. And we've probably sold over 800 million in sales since we've been in business, right? So I, I do just want to let you know, you are dealing with someone who does this at a high level. And so all my recommendations and advice is going to come from the years of experience that we have, right? Do you have any questions about, you know, who we are or what we do? And usually they're going to say no, right? But now they're going like, okay, I'm listening now, right? And so you see how I was able to tell you exactly what I do, like in one minute, not even how many seconds was that? 30 seconds, 30 seconds. 25 seconds, right? And so here's the thing. If you want to be good, guys, you need to be able to do that. Because the people that you're going up against, these other listing agents, they do that and more, right? And so you need to be able to have your elevator pitch, right? Like if you were at the grocery store or you bumped into someone and you quickly wanted to tell them the 20 seconds of who you are and what you bring to the table, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have closed a bunch of deals but you need to be able to rehearse what our company brings and you're part of this company, right? And so you got to study that stuff, guys, or else you will get blown out of the water. Listings is a whole nother ball game. It's super competitive, right? Um, so, uh, okay, so now we're going to move forward. Is there any questions on that, right? Uh, really quick, who wants to give me their 25 second spiel? Like, just like I did, who, who knows it? But who could just rehearse it off the top of their head? No, not you, not you. No, one of the people, one of the, Mark, I think you could do it. Hey, let me quickly tell you about me. Okay, cool. That was good. That was good. What I would add in is I would add in like how many reviews we have, how many homes we've sold, stuff like that. Just a quick stats. Hey, we have over 600 five-star reviews. Our team has sold well over 800 million in sales since we've been in business, right? And so, and I would just drive home. So you're dealing with, you're dealing with the legitimate team. We do do this at a high level, right? But everything you said, I would just add that little piece on the, on the back end, right? And so, right? Close it all up, right? So you're dealing with you're you are dealing with a legitimate team. I'm not just some random person that called you on the phone. We we are here, you know, we do intend to really help you out. We can, we'll do that at the end. We'll do that at the end. Um okay, so and then I would I would finish it. Do you have any questions about you know my track record or our back? Right? No? Okay, great. Hey, so what I've done is I've taken some time to prepare, I've done a lot of research on your home. Um, just to, you know, give you a, a, an idea of what you could get, you know, what sort of offer you can get on your property. And there's kind of going to be the low end. There's going to be the middle end. There's going to be the high end. And I also want to remind you, right. If you see what I'm just going to the next bullet point, I also want to remind you that this is an estimate, right. And so without us coming and seeing your home and really, you know, seeing exactly what we're working with, you know, it is going to be an estimate, but once we come out there, we'll be able to give you some concrete numbers. Is that fair, Mr. Client? Yeah, that's fair. Right. Um, and so I want to, uh, just quickly go over, um, the, the ranges. And I also want to just explain like how these pricing, how the pricing is determined is what I would say. Right. Um, really what's going to make up, you know, the difference between a home selling on the low end, the middle end or the high end is going to be a couple of things. It's going to be like the condition of your home. It's going to be how well the, how the home is priced and how well the home is marketed and presented to the buyers out there. Right. So some of the homes in your area, like there's some homes that, they didn't really put much effort, you know, they could have been nice homes, but it wasn't marketed right or it wasn't priced right. And it ended up selling for less. There's some homes that kind of just did 
the minimal and it's maybe sold in the middle end. And then there's some homes that really, really went above and beyond to put the effort in and showcase their home and price it right and market it properly. Those are the homes that have sold for the most, right? So what I'm looking at is I'm going to kind of run through a couple of sales in your neighborhood and I've identified these, you know, three or four sales that I want to point out. So it looks like your home is, you know, 1600 square feet, four bed, two bath. Is that correct? Great. Okay. So I went back the last few months. There's this home on main street that was pretty much the identical to yours, the same model. It looks like in that neighborhood, there's certain uh, track homes that, that are identical. This one was not fixed up at all. It didn't really show well. The photos were really blurry. You know, they didn't really put a lot of effort. It looks like the realtor just put the sign in front of the yard and said, Hey, come put an offer on it. This one ended up selling for a million dollars, right? They listed it for a million 50 and it actually sold for less than the asking price for a million. And it sat on the market for about 36 days. You know, so in my opinion, what they did wrong is they just didn't really put any effort into this home. I think it could have sold for probably 50 to a hundred grand more if they would have just had nicer photos and if they would have priced it correctly, right? Um, do you recall that home on Main Street right around the corner from you? Yes, no, maybe, whatever, right? Okay, great. Um, then there's this other home that was kind of the middle of the road and what you know, kind of middle price range. And this one sold for 1.1 million. This home actually looked fully remodeled. Um, the photos looked pretty well. It didn't look like it was staged or anything like that, but it, it presented itself pretty well. They priced it at a million fifty five and it looks like it sold over asking. It sold for one point one million and it sold in about two weeks. So I would say this is a pretty good comparable and a good example of, you know, when the home is priced right and the condition is right, it sells for more. Any questions on that one? That was the one that was on, you know, Main Street down the street, right? And then this last one that I see, this is actually someone, it looks like they went all out. The home looks like it's completely remodeled, newly renovated. Uh, the photos, the marketing, the staging, everything looked really, really pristine. And they actually listed it at $999, which they listed it lower than the other two properties. But it was the nicer of the three that I'm telling you about. This one ended up selling for one million two hundred and fifty thousand, right? And so you see, when the home is priced right, when it's staged, when it's presented, when it's in good condition, it actually sold for one hundred and fifty thousand more than the last home, which was pretty nice as well, right? So I would say the low end in your neighborhood for a home that doesn't show so well is probably a million. The high end in your neighborhood is probably about a million two fifty. And then one thing I noticed in your neighborhood right now is there's not really any other homes for sale, right? There's, there's one home that's on the market, but it's pending already. So there's no homes for sale. So I anticipate, you know, the market's moving up. If your home met all the conditions, you know, we can probably even break a new record. It is possible, right? But I'd have to come out there and look at your home and, and give you a game plan for that, right? So I made that all up right now, but that's how I would explain it. I would take my comps, I would summarize it, I would explain that I did my research, that I looked at the details. I would ask them if they remember this home, they saw it, maybe did you check out the open house? And then I would tell them the price range. You're on the low end, you're a million. You're on the high end, a million 250. But because of the market conditions and the limited inventory, you might be able to push the price up if your home is in top condition, marketed properly and priced. All right, I know that's a lot. Questions there. the property correctly right and and having a price correct those are the two things that we can repeat like probably like eight times mm -hmm. right and that's and then he circles back to that okay you see how this one was marketing correctly and price correctly that's how they were able to do this right so i want you guys to really that's something that we've been doing for a while i don't know where you learned that at Enrique, but even when he when they're trying to pinpoint um for him to determine what what the property going to sell for yeah he reverts back to that 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 dialogue Right, as long as we know what's in our control, the way we market the property, the way we prep the property, and the way we price the property. Yep. So I don't. I want to make sure that you guys caught that. Yeah. Um. So that covers those two points, right? Going over the price ranges, the low, the median, the high, explaining how the condition, the pricing, marketing of the home makes the difference, right? I gave them details of the comps, so then they see. So what in what impression would you get from all that information I just gave you? If you were the person I was calling back, if I called you back, Antonio, Antonio, what impression would you have that I know my shit? What else? Did I take the time? Right. Attention to detail. Serious. Right. 
Did I take the time to to do the research, right? And then what I was was I able to explain it in a professional manner that made sense, right? And show my am I am I showing my value there on that call, right? So it's just it's not rocket science, guys. Like when you like I going back to what I said in the beginning, when you take the time to prep and learn the stuff, then you could be able to to really spit it back and make it sound really good, right? And that's where the preparation comes in. Um, okay, so now the next thing, important question right here is ask them how their home might measure up to the comps and what is more important for them when selling. Is it more speed and ease or is it more putting in the effort and getting top dollar? Because I just told you like what's happening in the market, right? I basically gave you a CMA breakdown, right? And now, so, hey, Antonio, um, now that we've talked, you know, and I kind of gave you a little idea of what's going on in your neighborhood, um, I'm curious, how do you think your home measures up? You know, would you say your home is in need of, you know, repairs or remodels or on a scale of one to 10? You know, where does it stand? Uh, would you say your home is, you know, really nice, really taken care of? You know, give me your, your feedback. Yeah, just pick one of the three. It's in pretty good condition. Okay, and when you say pretty good condition, has there been any recent upgrades, anything like that that you think would really showcase your home? Okay, okay, so uh, spruce it up. What about the rest, like the bathrooms, the yard, the, you know, exterior and stuff like that? It's all in pretty good shape. Okay, okay, great. And I, what, what would you say is more important to you, Antonio? Is it more like if you were to sell, is it like speed and ease of the transaction? Like make it happen fast, make it happen easy? Or is it more like, hey, I want to get every dollar out of this property and I'm willing to, you know, put some effort in if that means I'm going to get fifty, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars more. Yeah. Getting top dollar is important. Okay, great. Okay. Um, and so it's it's uh it's great that you say that because in order for us to achieve that, that's why I think it'd be really important for us to meet in person because that's where I'll be able to really break down just the way I did right now of, of how these properties sold. I'd be able to really give you all the recommendations of what you can do to really, you know, surpass that high end of the market, you know? So um, when I come out there, right? So this is me now explaining the value of the appointment. Remember I'm selling the appointment, not the marriage, right? Um, when I come out there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk the property with you. I'm going to point out every single thing that I would do, all my recommendations, I'm going to show you how you can do that with these, where to invest, you know, your efforts in so you get the most return on investment. Um, and this way we can get you sold, you know, in the timely manner that's good for you, get you over to this new neighborhood you guys, you know, want to move to Willow Glen and make it happen and get you top dollar, right? Um, that is something that that you're looking for, correct? Okay. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and set a time to meet and where I can come by and walk the property. Um, I'm, you know, mornings or afternoons, which typically works better for you? Afternoons. Okay. Now I have some time this Thursday or Friday. Would one of those days work for you? Friday after three. Okay. So let's go ahead and pencil in. Uh, I could be there about 3.30. Is that fine? Okay. 3.30. And then I'll come out. Then your wife will be there as well. Okay, great. So we'll come by. And like I said, right now, I just want to make sure I give you all the information. I want to make sure you know exactly, you know, what to do and how you can get top dollar, which is what you asked for. And, um, you know, see how we can help you reach your goals, you know, in, in the best way possible. So Friday at 3.30, I'll see you there. I'm also going to send you an email with some of my information, with access to our reviews, um, you know, a little bit more info on how we how we run our company. And I'll see, I'm excited to see you on um, Friday at 3.30. Yeah, do you have any other questions before I let you go? Okay, great, click, right? So that's me booking the listing appointment. You see how I just eased right into it? I didn't say like, hey, you know, do you want to meet? Do you want to do a listing appointment? I said, the words that I said were, why don't we do this, right? So I think that's the key part there as well is you don't want to ask for the listing appointment. You want to recommend the listing appointment and you want to assume that they want to meet with you, right? Now, Antonio didn't give me any objections or anything like that but if you did your job right and the client is motivated that's usually how it'll go now if he's like not sure and all that stuff or not motivated yet or anything like that then he'll kind of pump the brakes a little bit right and then he might say well I, you know it sounds all good but I, you know we're just not really ready to make any moves or anything like that and then i would just have to 
objection handle, right? I would just have to let them know that, hey, this is strictly informational, right? You know, doesn't mean you're selling your home today. I'm not coming over with a sign or anything like that to put in your front yard, right? This is really just to help get you guys prepared because you said you want to be in Willow Glen in six months. Is that about right? Yeah, so six months is going to come by really fast. And I, what I find is it takes a few months to prepare for this. And so I want to make sure you have all the information and then you guys can start figuring out, you know, how we're going to make this happen, you know, in that, in that time frame. So um, why don't I come by on, you know, Thursday or Friday, you know, are you guys home in the mornings or afternoons? Right. And so what I did is I just wrapped that objection up, put a little bow on it. And then I go back to, why don't I come by? Why don't I do this? Right. And I think that's the part right there. This is sale. This is sales, right? This is sales technique is you don't want to say something and then go, does that sound okay? Are you okay with that? Like you already know, assume it sounded okay. And just go back to, why don't I do this? That's called assuming the close, right? Right. Okay. Now let's, let's flip it. They're not motivated. They don't want to sell, right? Cause you're going to get some of those too. Hey, thanks for all the information. I was hoping to get 2 million. I just told you it's one, two, five is the high end, right? You know, you know, let's, so let's, let's do that. Right. And I, yeah, I just kind of wanted to see, I'm not really, you know, wanting to make a move or anything like that. So give me that Antonio. So Antonio, um, what I recommend is, uh, you know, why don't I come over? Why don't we go over this process? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you, you were just more kind of wanting to see what the home is worth? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so is there is there a certain reason that got you on that train to kind of explore this option? Like what what was the next step if 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 you got the price you wanted? Just uh, curious. Just curious? Okay. Um, but you did say earlier, and we kind of recapped the information that you guys wanted to relocate out of state. Um, is that still the plan or? There's a lot of things up in the air. Okay, so do you think it would make sense for me to come out there and like show you what you have to do to get top dollar? Or do you think you're a little further out still? Okay. Uh, okay, so why don't we go ahead and do this? Um, and I would have, so I'm gonna pause right here. I would have already discovered that this guy was unrealistic based off like the initial call, the stuff like that, right? And so if he's, I would have done this a few times, but if he's just like, nah, I'm not, you know, I'm not really trying to waste anybody's time or anything like that. I would ask, okay, unpause role play. So Antonio, so if, if we were able to get you, you know, one, two, five, maybe even more, right. Based off the, off the comps and, you know, help, help you sell this home with an easy process. You guys still wouldn't want to take advantage of that this year. You don't know what's holding you back. I sent some hesitation. What's holding you back. Okay, so it sounds like you guys still have to figure out a couple of things, right? What sort of information do you think you would need in order to figure those things out? Because I'd love to just be a resource for you, right? So, you know, sometimes I find like, you know, two or three brains are better than one, right? So maybe if you and your wife even want to just sit and chat and we can even see like, does it make sense to sell or not? Does it make sense to relocate? Um, how much equity, you know, would you walk away with? What would the payments look like on the next property? Like, it sounds like you would need to figure out some of those things to see if even it makes sense to move. Is, am I catching you right? Yeah. Okay. So why don't we do this? Why don't we just set a time just to do that, just to explore the numbers, right? And like I said, I know you're not trying to sell right now, but this is what I do for a living. I'm a professional. I want to make sure I give you value so that when the time is right, you have all the information you need and, you know, if I'm the person you choose to work with, I'd love to help you. So I can come over and we'll focus our energy on breaking down the numbers, seeing what, you know, mapping out a, a game plan to go to your next step or whatever, you know, crunch the numbers. What would the payments look like? How much would you walk away with? And then from there, then you guys can think it over and see, you know, what the time frame is. Does that sound fair? Okay, great. And then I would just go back afternoons, evenings, whatever. Right. And, and then I would say, Hey, Antonio, and I totally understand where you're at, man. Like I said, I'm not, yeah, it's a big move. Like I didn't expect to call you and you're like, Hey, come put the sign in front of the house. Right. I say that on the call. Right. And they start laughing half of the time. Right. I'm not coming over with this big old for sale sign, Antonio, don't worry. Right. 
I'm coming over here to just give you some good information. And, you know, like I said, I want to, you know, be an advisor to you. And then when you're ready, I'm here, you know? And so that's really the approach that I'm going to take with you. Is that fair? Okay, cool. Meet you on Friday. Um, right now, if he was just like, no, nah, you know, I would, you can't give me 2 million. I ain't selling. Right. And I would, right. Then I would be like, well, Hey, you know, Antonio, I totally understand. I would walk through this dialogue first. And then if he still went back to, well, yeah, I'm not going to sell, right? Some people would just flat out tell you, I'm not going to sell. You know, if I got some ridiculous number, like 2 million, you know, you told me the house is worth 1.5, you know, if someone gave me like a number that I couldn't refuse, then maybe I'd think about it. Okay. All right, Antonio. Well, it sounds like, it sounds like this is more of kind of like a wish, not necessarily a need, right? And so um, why don't I do this? Why don't I just go ahead and stay in touch with you? Because you never know, the market's moving. Maybe in a year or two, like those prices could be where you where you want them, right? Um, and so I'll stay in touch with you. I'll keep you updated on the market. I'll continue to send you some of my info. And then if we get to that point where it is a little more realistic, then we can set a time to meet. Is that fair? So then I would do something like that. And I would just turn this guy into a nurture at that point. All right. So questions, questions, questions. Anything? Yeah. This is all theory right here, uh, which is a great framework, right? And, and I highly recommend that we, I think we and Deb are working on like some scripts. It's, this is the layout of it, this is the platform of it, but you gotta embody it, you gotta really internalize it. And your your personality needs to come out of that, that conversation. Yeah. Right. And so I think it's it, what it's just practice, guys. If, if you guys are going to be taking these calls, you got to practice. And as you see, guys, like expect some objections, right? Like he gave me some objections in that you know second scenario, and so that's fine. And so what I want to got when I want to remind you guys is you got to act like you're in a boxing match, right? An objection is a jab, guys. It's not a knockout punch. It's not like Tyson just slugged you in the face, right? And you fall to the ground. It's really a jab. And so when a jab, a jab might hit you and you're not going to fall down or you can move out of the way. Right. And so I want you to know that objections are part of the process. And so you can't get all flustered when an objection comes at you. You got to say, okay, Hey, I understand what you're saying. Just by repeating the objection back to him, that helps clarify like, Hey, is, is this what you're saying? Am I understanding you? Right. You know? And then I would pose a couple of different scenarios. Well, what if we were able to do this? Or what if I could come over and we focus our, our energy just on figuring out these numbers and, Helping you guys at least understand where, you know, where you're at, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. So um, the framework is it's just follow the framework. It's not the end all be all, but it's a great guide for you, but you have to be able to think on those conversations and you have to just be able to ask the questions, right? Ask the questions and really help figure it out. Can you can you break down just break down the transition from when you're asking or recommending for you to go to the property, right? After you go over the comps, you're telling them, hey, listen, what is, you know, where, where did your property lie? Right? Okay, well, what I recommend is that I come out the property. Can you just go over that part one more time? Yeah, one more time, the transition. So let's say like everything's going good. Now I'm gonna ask them, which is this question right here, right? So, hey, Mr. Seller, um, based off what I've told you, where do you think your home measures up to some of these other homes? Would you say your home is more kind of as is condition? Maybe it needs a little bit of work or repairs. Would you say your home is kind of middle of the road or is your home like really pristine and it's it's been you know remodeled and updated? You know, where would you say you fall into that? Uh, my pro our property is probably more, uh, I need some work. I mean, we've been in it for 30 years, so it's, Collected a lot of stuff from the kids, the grandkids, and my family. Okay. So yeah, I would say more. It needs a little bit of work. Needs a little bit of work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, that's totally understandable. You guys been there for thirty years. You know, there's probably some deferred maintenance or things that you'd want to do. Um, and so that's something that we can talk about when we meet in person. I can give you the recommendations of where to allocate your your efforts so that you get the most money for your property. Um. So, question for you is, what is more important when selling your home? Is it more like the speed and like making it quick and easy? Or is it like putting in a little more effort so that you can really get top dollar like the homes that I just talked about? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if I could wave the magic wand and make it go quick and give you the most money. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd love to do that for you, you know, and there are some, there are some ways to, you know, to do things like that. But I, I think, um, I think this is now bringing up why it's really important for us to come and meet and me to come out there and really see your property. Cause right now this is all just over the phone. You know, you've given me a description, but you know, I've had clients tell me their home needed to work. And when I went there, the house was falling apart, you know, and I've had clients tell me they needed work. And I went there, the house was actually really nice. It just needed a paint job. You know, so there's different degrees of, you know, of, of work that could be needed. You know, is that, see what I'm saying, Jason? Yeah. So, so that's even more reason for us to like, if this is something you're serious about, I can come out there, of course, no obligation. And I'll walk the property with you and I'll give you my honest feedback of what I would do to get top dollar. If that's really what you're trying to do, right. And how we can do it quickly and easy and, and try to maybe accomplish, uh, you know, a little bit of the both. Does that sound fair? Okay, great. Now, if I said, now, this is, I know I'm repeating this, guys, but I think this is a big transition. Yeah. Right? So now, now you said, well, you know, Enrique, my house is actually, you know, I saw that one that you you, you sent over, well, you know, for one, two, five, and my house is actually really, it's a lot nicer than that. Oh, okay, great. Well, then that means maybe your home could sell for more, right? And that's. I'm thinking, I'm thinking at least one. Yeah. I, you know, here's the thing, Jason, is what, like I told you before, is there's no other homes for sale right now in your neighborhood, you know? So our market really is dictated by supply and demand. And so there's a lot of people trying to move into your neighborhood. And if there's no homes for sale, when one pops up, we're seeing that the homes are going over asking. Now, to what degree is going to depend on how well it shows, where we start the price at, how we market it. And so those are the things that we would discuss when we meet in person. So I think that's even more reason for me to come out there. Let me actually give you a more thorough analysis and I'll give you my honest opinion and, you know, where you should put your efforts and how you can get the, how you can hit that one, three, maybe even more. Right. Um, you know. And the reason why I want you guys to see him do it is because this is how, this is your competition. These are the types of people that are going to be making these calls. So if you really want to get good at this, you need to practice it. Yeah. Um, so let's do this guys. We're going to break up into role play. And what I want you to do is just role play that part, just this part, right? Just the transition. Cause all the other stuff is like just going over the data. Like if you researched it properly, but I want you guys role playing the transition of where do you think your home measures up? You know, would you say it's more in, you know, just regular condition middle? Is it fully upgraded? You know, where do you think your home measures up? And then get them to tell you, ask a couple more questions to really clarify and then ask them. And what's important to you? Is it, is it selling just kind of quickly and easily, or is it maybe putting in more effort so that you can really, really get top dollar for your home? What would you say is more important to you? Right. And then from there, you're going to say, Hey, this is why it's important for us to meet and why I would recommend that I come out there and give you a more thorough analysis where I can really be honest with you and, and give you my recommendations on how to accomplish your goals, right? Is that fair? Okay, so.